Today we're going to be finishing uh, closing up a hole. I moved a through hole. I've already ground tapered and uh, put the patch on the inside. So today we're going to be grinding. You can see the circle there. It's approximately uh, 12 to 1. I just guess on it. Uh, that size hole I'm going to put up an 8 inch patch. I've got one on the other side. It's a smaller hole. I'm going to do a 6 inch patch. We're going to be grinding it out with a 36 grit on a four and a half inch grinder. I won't show the actual grinding out because I don't want to get dust on my tablet. As always, don't forget to wear your protective gear. Well, you see a white hole, now actually it's gray. Uh, the fiberglass is in the center. I've made one pass with my 36 grit and you can see really all I've taken off is the, uh, is the, the black bottom paint. That gray is six layers of Interlux 2000E. That's an epoxy based paint. Uh, so even with 36 grit, it's going to take some doing to get through that. I highly recommend uh, Interlux 2000E. You can see that I have it totally ground out now. You see the center here. That's the patch from the top. So I've completely 100% ground to the old patch. I've tapered it. Nice even taper 12 to 1. Halfway through, I switched to this. Let's see if I can get it in there. Turbo cut. Yeah, uh, you don't want to get that thing loose on you. Uh, if you do, uh, well, that's what's going to end up. So, again, wear your protective gear, and uh, tomorrow we'll lay some glass on that. Good morning. So today we have our, our patch all cleaned up, taped off. I'll show you that in a minute. We have our fiberglass all cut. And let's get ready to do some glassing. Let me turn the camera around. So camera's turned around. I use a piece of round masonite and I cover it with uh, two layers of saran wrap. Um, the saran wrap makes it easy to peel off once I've glassed a, a thick patch together. And the... Masonite just makes it easy to carry. So here's my stack. Here's my first layer. I'm using one and a half ounce today instead of two ounce. Uh, here's the rest of my stack, alternating layers of biaxial. Let me see, get, get a piece of biaxial there. There, you can see the biaxial. Alternating layers of biaxial and matte. Again, we're using polyester resin. It's my uh, resin of choice when you're working with a fiberglass hull because the entire boat's made of polyester resin anyway. So this is going to be our first layer. Then I'll do a layer of biaxial followed by the same size layer of matte. And then I've got uh, seven stacks of those, so 15 total. So here's my area, all taped off, ready to go. I went over it again with my turbo cutter to uh, rough it up. Uh, the rougher it is, the better the resin will adhere to the original hull. Now, why did I tape it off? Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, I didn't want to get resin on the bottom paint, which is all nice and pretty black. Uh, but also, if you remember, I've got barrier coat under this. I've got six layers of gray 2000E, and that's an epoxy base. And if you remember, resin, polyester resin doesn't stick to epoxy. You can put epoxy over resin, but you can't put resin over epoxy or polyester. And so that's why I've taped up all the gray and then a drip area at the bottom. I'm using a three inch roller. I'm using just a little more than a cup today. Uh, standard mix ratio is 10 cc's to the quart. So I'll use about two and a half. I'll probably use three cc's because it's probably about 65 degrees today. So I want it to cure at a good rate, but not too slow, not too fast. So since I don't have a helper to hold my camera, you're not going to get to see me wet it out. Um, hopefully you all know how to wet out fiberglass. I can uh, do it in another video. So I've wet out my area here uh, with a brush that way. I work the uh, the new resin down into the grit in the fiberglass. Uh, then I'm going to put my new layer on. I'm going to wet the corner just a little bit. I wet it just enough to get it 
get it to start sticking. Now, why am I doing this? Uh, I want to make sure my first layer is properly wetted out to my uh, to my hole before I start putting my patch on. Besides, it's easier to do it on a bench than it is upside down. You can see it's dripping all over the place. So I'll wet this out. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but I can work it out when I get my other layers on here. But I want to get most of it. Okay, so here's my whole patch, uh, all 14 layers, um, including the top layer, which I boo-booed, and I got to figure out a way to, oh, it's on the back here. Okay, we'll leave it there. We'll bring this out. I'll peel off this saran wrap. Lay it in place. Now you start with your largest circle first. That way you have 100% contacting the hull. If you started with the smallest one first, then every layer would only have a half inch of new glass touching the hull. See how easy that wets out? Look at that. It looks like I almost planned this. Okay. And then I've got one more layer. You can stay on this. I've got one more layer inside. This is my two ounce top layer. That's going to cover the whole thing. Now it seems to be just a little bit hollow in the middle, a little bit of a dip, but that's okay. Once it cures out, I can I can add more on. More on? Did I really say that? I can add on more. So we want to get get all the bubbles out. We want to get any extra resin out. One of the reasons I press it on the on the bench first is so that I can do get the resin out. You see, if I push to the edge, zoom in, push to the edge. I'm pushing out a lot of resin, okay? That's resin that's not needed. The fiberglass is what holds it. Uh, if you have any more than a 50-50 by weight resin and glass, you've got too much resin in there. So we're gonna press all that resin out. And then once I have it nice and pretty, then we're just gonna let it sit here for, well, probably the rest of the day until it cures and we can do our first sanding on it. Okay. Good morning. So I've got them sanded down. I rough sanded it with my four and a half with a 36 grit. Then I went over it with a board sander so that I could get it nice and flat. Then I'm a little low in the center. You see the circle there. I've uh, I roughed that up with the turbo turbo wheel so I can get a nice good bite on it. But I've got uh, five more, six more piles of glass ready to, to put in there. So here's my six piles of glass. I actually have two of them. I'm working on two holes. Uh, you're only seeing one. So I will wet that out, lay it up. Then I'll do the next segment on uh, after it's laid up and see what it looks like. Today's video, we're going to finish this through hole patch. Um, I put another layer on it. I've ground it down oh, pretty good flat. I use just a 12 inch drywall uh, knife. I'll go across it, see if it's level. If there are any high spots, I'll drag it down. Uh, I'm also going to use this to ferret uh, in a little bit, and uh, you'll see how that's done. Um, I don't need to be perfectly flat. Uh, because I'm going to use the epoxy fairing compound. Ah, you're jumping up and down, epoxy. I said everything was polyester. Well, at this point, we're going to use an epoxy two-part uh, equal 50-50 marine grade fairing compound. Uh, you see the gray there, that's an epoxy barrier coat. So it's proper at this time to use an epoxy fairing compound, which can be used either under or over 
the gray epoxy barrier coat. So uh, let's get some mixed up and then we'll get it spread on. I'm going to use all grip, all fair, uh, D7200, D8200. As you can see, they're, they're two different colors. I keep a stick in each one. I don't mix them. And then we're going to mix it in this cup here. I'm going to use a, just a standard 1-8. That'll give me a quarter cup of fairing compound. Make sure you clean these with acetone right after you're done with them or mommy will be all upset because these are hers. Well, not really. I don't have a her. But, you know, you get my point. Okay, you can see I got this mixed up on a pallet. Uh, it's easier to mix on a pallet than in a cup because then you can see if there's uh, any streaks of, of either the red or the pink. See, there's a little streak of red, but I can blend it all in. And uh, now we're all ready to uh, put it on. So let's see what we got here. There we go. Uh, this stuff doesn't set up that fast. You've got some good working time with it. Um, try not to use too much at a time because you're just going to pull it down and take it off anyway. Uh, when you pull your trowel across, remember you're going to put a slight curve onto it because that's the shape of the hole. See that little bit did our entire surface here. We'll let that set up and we'll give it a sand tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to end this video. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to surface sand it. I might have to put a little bit more on to give it a perfectly smooth finish. Uh, I'm still not completely concerned about a perfectly smooth finish because I'm going to be putting six coats of barrier on this. That's the gray. And you can sand between coats of barrier to take some imperfections out and get it really smooth. And, and so when you rub over it, you won't be able to feel anything but the, the curve of the hull. So um, this video has gotten kind of long, and I don't want it to get it any longer. Besides, I'm not going to paint it uh, yet anyway. Um, so this will get sanded out, and then maybe one more skim coat, but probably not. I hope you've enjoyed my video, and thanks for watching.